Rita Dreamer from the Stonebridge Homestead. Welcome back. Thanks for watching today. This is part two, but we haven't done part one yet. In this video today, I am going to show you how to make the cloth that's going to go over the chicken slides, how I make it. Uh, we're going to measure it. We're going to shop for the materials and then I'm going to make it and put it on the chicken slide. Then our part one video, which will come after our part two video <laughs> is going to be Paul showing you how to do the build of the chicken slide. So come along and join us. Let's get out of this hot greenhouse and get it measured. So here is the final addition of the chicken slide. Paul just made it and we made a few changes on it. In that video, we'll go over the changes that we made. What I'm doing today is I'm making some cloth that goes from one side to the other that we can hook on with grommets and carabiners. One is to provide some rain protection when we have the driving rains. The way Paul made it, this side is now enclosed, so that fixes a lot of it. But in the winter, uh, they need an insulated covering to help give them some warmth. Then in the driving rains that we have in the spring and fall, like tornado type weather, <laughs> we need to have protection on the sides from the rain. So that's what I'm doing today. Right now I'm only going to make the rain cover and then later as it gets in the cooler weather, I'll make an insulated one for the winter. Okay, we're going to measure from one end to the other end. Uh, when you sew, you have to leave a uh, selvage on the end. I'm going to make half inch seam allowance doubled over, so I'm going to add an inch to each side. Okay, I have it on the other side. Uh, it's about four feet even. Perfect. And then we're going to measure it going this way. Four feet by right at five feet. So we have four feet by five feet. Hey, we have a predator in the garden here. Who is the predator in the garden? Dun dun dun! It's Paul! It's like Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm here with my trusty sidekick and we are going to try to find some fabric here. He is going to record me. I know what I want in my head, but I just have to find it. It has to be something that's breathable but semi waterproof. So let's go find some. This? And it's 50% off. Now, what color should we get? I want to though. They could do an American flag one. That, that'd be a little too bright. Here's just like a gray and white stripe. I don't know if they really are. That's what Ooh, she I said. Like this one. I like this one. What do you think? Won't that be pretty? Mm, yeah. I like this. I got the fabric. Next, I have to get some grommets. I just had a moment of inspiration here. Instead of grommets, because I have to get clips anyway, what if I just sewed a loop on here and then attach this to the wire that cuts out a step of getting a carabiner? I could sew this directly on. Can you guys see the loops? Clip them. What yes, are they? Is yes, the question. Yes. Holy camari! <laughs> Thirty-four bucks. <laughs> are you kidding me? These are forty. Great thought. Those are forty. Except... Okay, I'm gonna break down and get the big pack. That was ridiculous, but I have a coupon for twenty-five percent off, and this will do three chicken slides. Keep in my receipt in case they don't work. I have squared off the the one edge to finish it. And now I'm getting ready to cut the other edge to make it five feet 
two inches because we, I need a five feet and I'm gonna do an inch seam allowance on each end. So I've cut that, that is here. I've saved my piece on the end to make the straps because if you remember the ridiculously expensive clips, I have to make little uh, tabs to put these on so I can use them as clips. I'm not going to press this. Technically, you should fold it up half inch, fold it up half inch, and then press it. I don't have time for that. I would have to unbury my ironing board. So I will take this and as I sew, I'll stop and just keep remeasuring and just kind of push it down with my fingers and sew. It's a chicken slide. If this was a, an outfit that I was gonna wear or something important that required precision, I would obviously press it and be more professional about it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it half inch, half inch, all the way around. You have two choices when you get to the corners. You can fold it up half inch. When you get to the end, just go off the edge, cut your fabric, cut and cut your thread, and then just fold up half inch, fold up half inch, and then just take off from this side. It'll just be squared like this. No problems whatsoever from the front. It's going to look the same. And again, chickens are only gonna be the ones who see it, so they don't really care. If you wanna be all fancy schmancy, you can miter your corner. So you fold it down in a triangle. If you really wanna be professional, you press it first. We don't have time for that. Then you fold up half inch and another half inch on one side. And you fold up half inch and another half inch on the other side, which then gives you a fancy corner. This is a mitered corner. Uh, so you can do it either way. You could also do it this way. You can fold it up an inch, press it at an inch, and then fold it under like so to make half inch. Lots of possibilities. I have chosen to do just the regular non-mitered corner, just squared off. So let's sew. for these hooks. I'm hoping that I can just hook these onto the, the chicken cage. Mm, let's do three and a half. I'd rather have them too long than too short. So let's do three and a half long. And they're about half an inch wide. Four, so we're gonna cut them eight inches long. It's gonna be eight by one and a half. Instead of using that big piece that I cut off the end, I think my selvages are gonna work nicely. So no sense in cutting into a big piece. That'll work. So I'll need four for each, one for each corner. So four strips that are one and a half by eight inches. Got my grid ruler here again. I'm only gonna try one right now before I cut out all four of them. Inch and a half. And I've lined up the inch and a half mark along the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna take my handy dandy rotary cutter. And we're gonna cut right down, inch and a half. Now let's measure up eight inches. So here is, there's my eight inches there. So I'll go to the end of my ruler and cut it here. So here's the strip. I don't know that I like that. That's gonna be really small. So I may have to just do it in half and zigzag this edge to keep it from unraveling. Loop it through and then secure it to the fabric here. That's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do a zigzag on the edge. This fabric's way too thick to try to turn that right side out. So let's do that. Let's switch the machine to a zigzag. I'm just going to fold it in half like so. Do, do, do. So there's our tab. Let's check the size on here. It's a little wider because I made allowance for those scenic allowances. So it is a little bit wider. I think that'll be okay. 
So that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to zigzag along the top of here. I should probably fold it over and do it that way, but that's way too many layers of fabric to go through. We're just going to zigzag along the top and then put it onto the cover. I'm going to backspace here just to make sure it's good. There we go. Alrighty, now to make four more. too close to the edge but I also don't want it too far in because then this will be flapping around in the wind and the rain so I think maybe let's just see this is our experiment the next one I make it I can always move it let's try three inches in and we are going to pin it right here to mark it and then I'm going to do that on all four corners and then I'm going to sew with the X pattern to make it reinforced so Let's pin them and then I'll sew them. So there we have it. We have hooks on a loop. Oops, and some thread. I gotta go back and trim these. So we got four hooks. I panicked for a moment because I thought maybe I had put them on the four foot side instead of the five foot side, but it wasn't. I actually did it right. <laughs> so make sure you put it on the long side, not the short side. Next thing we have to do is put it on the chicken slide and try it out. Let's go see if it works. Here it is on the chicken slide. It is anchored, so it's not gonna blow away. I ended up putting a third clip in the middle just so it doesn't billow out. I wish we would have had it on here last night. We had a really bad windy rainstorm. And then, yeah, I think that's gonna work. I like it. And then in the winter, I'll have an insulated piece that goes under it. There it is in the row. I can also flip it back and because I have the hook in the middle, it anchors it at the end here, this end. And then we anchored, we folded it back and anchored the corner further back. So they get ventilation. We can't have them covered all the time or else they don't get enough ventilation. That's just for when we're expecting some hard rains with some wind, especially when it's the cold rains in the fall and the spring. What do you think, Paul? I like it. Good. Can I have one to wear? Yes, I'll make you a poncho. Okay, <laughs> I put it over my head. So this was part two. And next one, we are gonna go back and do part one. That's his part. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you got to do a, a, a video. I, I got to do a video? You got to do a video. Yeah, you're part I gotta one. I got to do everything. You're the most important part. You're part one. No, I'm so part half. You got to show them how to build the chicken slide. Oh. And then this is part two, the covering for the chicken slide. Oh. But I couldn't wait on you, so I had to go ahead and do part two. Dang. <laughs> okay, whatever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye. Bye.